But uh, in the teaching of philosophy, mm -hmm. that big regress is definitely regress. For instance, 40 or 50 years ago, <laughs> the phenomenology and the existentialism were totally unknown in North America. And nowadays, existentialism and phenomenology causes are required causes of the university. And it's still not that, because they don't understand it. There's nothing to be understood. But they know the professor don't tell them that. It's not the happy in the US. I remember the first time I mentioned Heidegger nearly half a century ago at the University of Pennsylvania. Exactly half a century ago. And the students don't, they have never heard about Heidegger or existentialism. No one. But the, the, the people, philosophers were more interested in it, uh, more interesting uh, uh, subject. And now it is your kind of become a philosopher, a professor of peace in North America, uh, just like in, in Europe, in France, just by talking nonsense. Mm -hmm. and <coughs> but moralism has um, lower standards, the score is standards, uh, tremendously. There have been no regrets. And um, is that, also, is that true that you... Uh, people who are not progressive, in philosophy, and who are for charity and so on and so forth, they think that uh, it is enough for the philosophic argument to be formally correct. Never mind the content. The analytical Never philosophers. And so, yeah. interesting problems are not dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, they're too, too hard. Mm -hmm. the, is it true that you spent once a long is it true that you once spent quite a long time studying Hegel? Yes. I didn't spend time. I wasted time. <laughs> I wasted some of my best years. <clears throat> Between the ages of 17 and 22 or 23, something like that. Uh, at the same time, as I was studying physics. I was also trying to understand Hegel and what is worse, I thought I understood him. Mm. Which is, of course, uh, a clear mark that I didn't understand that most of what he said was nonsense. But what he had over the other charlatans, he was a charlatan in my view, but he had one great advantage, and this explains partly his popularity, namely that he dealt with interesting problems, and important problems, mm. unlike the other charlatans. Uh, <clears throat> Schopenhauer. You know, uh, understood that Hegel was a charlatan and said so, but he was no less of a charlatan than Schopenhauer and Hegel, and moreover, uh, he didn't say anything interesting, anything worth discussing. Uh, his ideas were completely crazy, just like the uh, Schilling. Uh, but uh, Hegel uh, did touch on a number of very important problems. And the state of freedom and even participation, you know. You know once in a while he had some uh, right ideas, but, uh, but not too often. And here, uh, one of his main, you know, the, the, the main, is a, uh, uh, say, <coughs> negative points about him is that he inspired the Marxists. He, Marxists, Adopted from Marx on Hegel, and they wanted to, they, they said that, you know, it's just a question of, uh, of, of changing uh, his ontology. Uh, whatever he talks about ideas, just uh, put the uh, matter and uh, material, and that will, that will uh, fix the thing. Well, it's, it's, it's not true. They believe in all the Hermetic propositions of Hegel concerning contradiction and so on. Um, and this has prevented, largely prevented, the development of, uh, of uh, Marxist uh, philosophy. Marxist philosophy has remained stagnant for a century and a half. But to think that, uh, <coughs> you know, in Germany, before the, before the reunification, there were two Hegel societies. One in East Germany and the other in West Germany. 
En die vond iets aan wat bovenen de gaal het heet wel eens de, 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 de might thinker of Mark Colvin. En none of them are tolerated uh, any, any discussion of Hegel's status. Mm -hmm. So yes, I spent, uh, I wasted a lot of time and what, what saved me uh, was the study my encounter with mathematics and logic. Uh, we didn't start learning in physics, of course. Uh, it was about time, all of a sudden, in the year 52, uh, the two volumes of George uh, Boone's Laws of Thought uh, fell into my hands just by chance. And <coughs> in, a, in a few days, I realized that they were the entire Hegel I was. And I became an enthusiast of mathematical logic. Uh, Boone was a very interesting, interesting guy. He was uh, mainly self taught, and he wrote not only, he was not only one of the builders of uh, modern mathematical logic, he also wrote a fantastic book on the probability calculus in, in the 1850s or so, uh, which um, people nowadays, if people were to read that book, they would claim much of the philosophy of probability. They were, for instance, one of the, uh, some of the uh, contemporary cosmologists talk about the probability uh, that there be life in, a, in one of the many universes that they imagine. And uh, so they, they, they compute the probability. Uh, one of them, famous guy, Tegmark, uh, says that the probability calculus allows you to compute the probability that there be life in a given universe. He doesn't know what the book says in the beginning of one of his, in his book of probability. That the probability calculus cannot <coughs> evaluate the time of the probability. What he does is to compute the probability of compound events from the probability assumed from the component or constituent of this. For instance, the probability of A or B out of the probability of A and probability of B. So in any case, mm -hmm. returning to Hegel, that before... Can I ask you one thing? Uh, did, did, did Marx uh, get the, uh, his understanding of the uh, centrality of social relations uh, out of Hegel? Somehow, that that is well, uh, I don't know about social relations, but we know uh, this that uh, Marx took from Hegel the idea that uh, society precedes the individual. Mm. Well, they coexist, of course. There is no society without individuals, and there is no individual that is not part of some society. It's like a uh, part and whole relation. It's uh, uh, Hegel follows, that he follows Aristotle, who said that the, the whole precedes the part. But the complete nonsense. Uh, the notion of either makes no sense without the notion of the other. And what, for instance, Mark was a, a, a holist to the extent that he says that uh, society. Uh, creates the ideas that are transmitted to the individual, but the ideas come from society to the individuals, not the other way around. <coughs> uh, that is a very unfortunate trait of, one of the many unfortunate traits of, of Marxism, that is, it is Horst. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, uh, I just learned that Max Weber uh, shared my enthusiasm for um, Frederick Engels, the first study, the study of the situation of the working classes in England, uh, that he did, it was an empirical study, sociological study, that he, before he met Marx, he went to Manchester and went to the homes of a number of workers in the uh, 
lives up to Manchester and inquired about the waiting list and so on. And it was a big study, moreover, it was quantitative. But unfortunately, that was the first and last sociological study that in this case. So there is no Marxist sociology, as you know. So they, they completely, they, they were not interested in that. They were, they were only, there was only Marxist uh, economics and uh, Marxist history, but not Marxist sociology or Marxist politics. Mm -hmm. This is very, this is one of the reasons that they were totally unable to understand when they came to power, to understand the, the societies that were ruled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that has changed at least a little bit as far as Marxists, although few people call themselves Marxists that are strongly influenced by him. Few people call themselves Marxists or neo-Marxists, even though I would say that, oh, yeah. that you know they have. Oh, but they have not changed Mar all of these particular. Marx, they were plagiarists. Plagiarists, Marx, on many occasions. Oh, yeah. uh, and, uh, but others uh, admit the importance of, of Marx. Uh, but unfortunately, Marxists don't admit anything that doesn't come from the Marxist mills. Uh, so uh, they haven't learned anything. Mm -hmm. It's true that there are many new Marxists, but they are, in, in my view, quite incompetent. With the exception of the historians, the, the French. It's the answer no longer according to Marxist, but it's full of the analysis of, unfortunately, it isn't very. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of the uh, British historians, like uh, Eric Thompson and uh, Eric uh, Hobsbawm. Mm -hmm. But they live with him, they live with Marxism. And for one thing, they, don't, they never refer to the other things. Uh, they reject. Marxism poetry, which comes from Hegel. Mm. So yeah. I, I was the first of my university, McGill, to give a course on Marxist philosophy some 30 years ago. I had something like 80 students, most of them from political science, they have never been exposed. One could not talk about Marxism. 30 but years ago, in, the, in 1980, or this was in 1980? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. The, the, in the student? Uh, well, when I came here yeah. uh, to, to Canada, I needed to consult Marxist Capital. It was nothing very serious. It was only in the agricultural college, which is very far away from downtown. So I never got to it. And so, uh, on the other hand, uh, 10 or 20 years later, with the student revolution and so on, there were too many Marxist books, which no one read, no one analyzed, no one. But in any case, that course of, of Marxist philosophy, I limited myself to a few of the authors that I knew, namely Marx, Engels, and Lenin. And every time I said something, I found criticism that was a student who knew about some new Marxists. They said, oh, yeah, they may have said that by so and so, and himself, or in science, mm -hmm. or, <coughs> well, or say something different. But in the end, I said, I'm not, never going to repeat that. This course because obviously my students know much much more about contemporary Marxism than I do. And anyway, I don't care for this uh, unless innovation because none of these new Marxists have produced anything. They mm -hmm. just uh, have uh, transformed, made some changes in Marxism, but none of them have produced their work and analysis of the political system of France. Or the economic system of Western Germany or Russia, you know, no, they have been totally scholastic. Just comments upon comments upon comments. Mm -hmm. Marxist scholastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 